Welcome to Sword and Shield, the official podcast of the 960th Cyberspace Wing. Join us for insight, knowledge, mentorship, and some fun as we discuss relevant topics in and around our wing. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any particular person or business is ever intended. Welcome to the Sword and Shield Podcast. I'm Colonel Rick Erich, 960th Cyberspace Wing Commander, and today I have the 960th Operational Support Flight with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Lieutenant Colonel Jarvis Croft. I'm the 960th OSF Commander. And Major Juan Perez, Director of Operations. And CMS Sergeant Gregory Brown, the Senior List Day Leader. Awesome. Hey, I know we, uh, we've been trying to schedule this for a while now and trying to get everybody together schedule-wise, so I appreciate it. Um, we are wearing masks just to be safe here, so we, we apologize for uh, if the sound's not perfect, but we, we feel it's important to have the discussion, and I'm um, really excited about the opportunity for you all to share about what the Operation Support Flight does, where you're going, what we're talking about every day, and then, um, you know, if, if people want to be part of the team so they understand what, what, what you're doing and how to join the team. Roger that, sir. All right. Hey, so give us a little bit. Um, so Colonel Croft is a commander. Tell us a little bit about OSF in general and and kind of what the scope and responsibility of the unit has. Yeah, great question, sir. So I'm the first commander of the OSF. And Number so one. The first one. And so we're still an organization in its infancy. And so we're still trying to build something special here. But originally, our mission was to support wing level initiatives. and really taking commander's intent and moving the mission forward. So we did things like POM analysis. We looked at how we could better integrate the reserves into the active duty mission set. Uh, we looked at things like uh, memorandums of agreement, the supported supporting construct. And so it was really more of a wing XP function. And now that we have a wing XP shop established, we're now transitioning to more of the traditional operations support squadron function so intelligence training weapons and tactics and current operations and so again we're in our evolution uh, we just started this transition to the more traditional OSS functions in fact we've spent a lot of time here over the past year trying to codify what that looks like and this will be my I'm coming up with my third year in command and so it's probably going to be the next commander to really start implementing what we put on paper but again I think we're moving in the right direction no, I really appreciate it. It's been exciting to watch that um, that evolution, and we really needed your team to be able to help the wing move forward. You know, I tell people that we're still a toddler. You know, we're just going on four as a wing, and so we needed this group of people to help us kind of realize and and grow up, frankly. And so it's really been helpful to have the right people to help us do that. And I'm excited for the future as we continue to build the wing infrastructure and get you back to doing what you really need to do to support the units. Um, across the whole wing, not just in the 960th COG, too. So I think that's that's worth noting as well. So Major Prez, and so Colonel Croft is a, is a t- traditional reserve commander. And so Major Prez, you're kind of the full-time guy. Um, what's that look like from a day-to-day basis on, on what the OSF is focused on? And, and I know you got a small full-time team and how you integrate your traditional reservists with some functions and programs and roles and responsibilities. Yeah, so um, I've been blessed with a great TR commander. I'm not just saying that because we're here on a podcast. Because <laughs> you have to. Yeah, but, uh, but no, he's really he's really empowered me to, to to lead the the unit when he's not here and backs up every decision I make. A lot of our focus has been on, on those wing projects, and um, I, I'd say it, it's been um, it was unexpected coming into the position, but it, it's been a great opportunity to be involved with the like the, the future of the wing and the, the direction that we're headed and have an impact on that. Um, so, so it is challenging, you know, involving TRs in those types of projects <clears throat> because, they, you know, they're coming in once a month and uh, for them to try and get them up to speed on what's going on and then have an impact on like an input into something uh, has been has been challenging. So we've, we've had them really focusing on um, the, the OSF, like supporting the units type of stuff. So like uh, things that things that most of the units uh, across the wing see are the um, the, the cub that we do the updock every month. And then um, on the training side, uh, we do the semi-annual, um, what's it called, Ready Cyber Crew uh, program um, report. And um, so 
but I mean, really outside of that, it, it just trying to keep, you know, those, those couple things are really keeping our head above water um, as, we, as we try and grow. And um, I, know, I know we've talked about this before, trying to grow us from just a flight of um, 13 authorizations uh, to a whole squadron, you know, based off the work that we've done on uh, what, what we're providing now and then that gap, um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to being able to you know, fill all those functions for and support the, um, all the units in our wing. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the, the updock meeting has really um, evolved into um, a commander's update brief, readiness, all things, really helpful for us to, uh, to make decisions going forward. And sir, just to, to add to what he said, so I think that's really the, the evolution of the OSF. And so uh, when I first took command, a lot of time was spent on establishing the identity, right? We didn't have, you know, a unit patch. We didn't have a unit mascot. Uh, we didn't have a mission statement, vision statement. So we had to really turn through that. And I'm, I believe we have the best patch in the wing, but I'm biased, of course. But I it's think- It's pretty scary. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> But I think he hit on another excellent point in terms of keeping our TRs engaged, right? And he pointed out it's very hard to have part-time engagement on such strategic and operational level tasks. And so what we're really trying to get after with our service catalog is ownership. And so, hey, you as a TR, you, you're no longer going to come in and it's just completely readiness focus. Understanding that's a big part. That's the number one thing as a reserve for a force, we have to be ready but you're going to be responsible for this task, this activity in support of the units. And so I think by giving real ownership to our TRs, we're going to get more buy-in, more engagement. That's going to help with retention in the long run. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think we need to give people meaningful work because that's why they're here, right? If they're going to give up a Saturday and Sunday, and I say all the time, give up cartoon time, <laughs> like the young kids don't get that, that the only time we could get cartoons was on Saturday mornings, right? <laughs> Couldn't get it 24-7 on the cartoon channel. That If they're going to give up that time from their families, that we need them to have meaningful work and responsibility. And, and so I really like how you guys have done that. And, um, you know, people responded. And yes, so it's, it's been exciting to watch. Hey, for Sergeant Brown, um, what kind of folks are you looking for? I know we've we've had some struggles sometimes about getting the right people from the recruiting channels, but tell us a little bit about the type of people you're trying to recruit and hire and, and where we're going with building the team. Yes, sir. So f for us being an uh, operational support flight and we are supporting all the weapon systems, the type of visual we want is someone with experience. Uh, Whip assist experience would be great. Um, definitely, you know, no one that's, you know, just coming out of, you know, upgrade training or anything like that because it's a big learning curve. Uh, we want those SMEs, subject matter experts in those Whip assistants so they can come to the unit and be able to provide that feedback and those uh, recommendations because we, we get tasks from AFRIC uh, reviewing 17-2s, um, uh, reviewing RCPs, those type of things, so we need those subject matter experts uh, to um, provide that feedback. So that's what we what we are looking for. We had, like you said, we have had some um, some issues with recruiting, but we've you know worked through those and moved those members to to the tactical units, and then um, getting getting those SMEs back. And so far as the future wise, we're uh, as we grow, we're definitely trying to um, get those. Um, the expertise from the units and grow a service catalog and be able to provide to the to the units. Yeah, so I think you're a little bit unique. Um, and when we look at this cyber wing being the only cyber wing, and we look across 10th Air Force, like OSSs look different in the flying community. And so I like that we're just going to try to build what we think we need, and that and that you guys service the entire wing, not necessarily just you know, your group, and um, there's a lot of opportunity there for us to shape this and build this the way we want to and in a way that we think, you know, that it needs to look. And so I'm, I'm excited for that. And what kind of things are you guys working on? I'll, I'll throw this out to anybody. What kind of things are you working on now for the for the future and helping the wing grow? Yeah, that's mostly me, <laughs> um, you know, being the full-timer. So I joke that um, – I'm just the director of operations for the OSF, and on paper, I'm really uh, dual-hatted, you know, for a lot of functions, uh, helping you out directly. Um, but yeah, so really excited about, um, gosh, a handful of things. So we just came out of that 
Africa Rapid Improvement Event for Cyber Operations Growth, where we got all the all of the cyber leaders in the community together and looked at requirements and um, it kind of determined which ones you know, are a good fit for the reserves and you know put a one to end list together. Um, so, so I'll put a plug in for that. They, they recorded that out brief, um, and th that's available for um, for folks who want to want to get that. We can I'm sure we can figure out a way to get it to them. Awesome, yeah, it's on Teams, so we can get there. Yep. Um, yeah. So uh, at least um, the, the one thing that's gotten me most excited is. Um, building uh, kind of like the notional information warfare wing. Um, it looks like we finally have support um, up the chain of command from General Berger and General Radliff at, at, at 10th Air Force. Um, so working with the 655th, um, we have, uh, I think we've got uh, three or four members from our wing and maybe a handful from their wing also. And um, looking at, you know, because REGAC doesn't have an information warfare wing, um, 16th Air Force has asked us, you know, to kind of test this out because they're not getting that convergence at, at their NAF level, at the appropriate level that they, they think is, uh, is what the mission needs. So us testing it out at the wing level and keeping that in mind, right? So it's one thing to just have capabilities in a wing, um, but to have that convergence and bring them all together, that, that's kind of what our focus has been. So um, yeah, that's, that's something really exciting that we're able to be a part of. Yeah, and, and I don't know what that would look like for within the OSF, but I assume we'd want to grow the OSF into an ability to support all those other IW capabilities and growth and the people and the weapons and tactics and th just the sky's the limit just blows my mind and so um, Jarvis to you about what you see on your MPA tour and and what's going on in the IW IO world and and how that could fit into the wing and the OSF interested in your thoughts there yeah so I've been on the staff now for a year on the MPA orders and. I think there's still a, a long way to go in terms of IW convergence. In fact, I think that we on the reserve side is probably leaning a little bit more forward than the active duty. And so I know we've had several conversations about how to better integrate IW writ large. I know you hear some of the big initiatives, JADC2, ABMS, and, and things of that nature. I think the challenge that we face on the active duty side in the NAF is trying to get the authorities aligned up. And so it's easy to say we have, you know, situation awareness of ISR assets and things like that, but there's really no direct line of authority to influence ops on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that really makes it difficult to converge all the different lines of IW. And so I think that the reserves are playing a key part in terms of leaning forward and bringing more ideas to that conversation. Yeah, we tried to build something here, and, and we've been asked to test, pilot, experiment, whatever, in order, whatever you want to call it, in order to kind of figure out where some of those things are, and maybe there's opportunities that we can do things um, using our skill sets of civilian um, citizen airmen bring to the table. So I'm excited about those, and you know, kind of lean on the OSF to to help organize and and align those functions. I know you asked me for a few things. I got more than that, just that one. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. So, I have yeah. one, two. Yeah, right. just yeah. jump in. Yeah, yeah. Pl plenty of good stuff. Right. So I'll make this one quick then. So um, uh, this next one is um, I'm just part of the team, right? Like I know Lieutenant Crumb and Koski is really leading the way on this and uh, getting help across the wing. But it's um, the, the CAFRGEN, the Combat Air Forces uh, Force Generation model, right? Yep. So this is a second, to just give some background, this is, this is actually a SECAF directed um, uh, initiative so it, I know we st got a little bit of a head start last year um, on the reserve side because we caught wind, we caught wind of it with the, uh, from the Africa A5X War, war and Mobile Plans War and Mobilization Plans team. So um, really looking at how we can um, present our forces better to, to to our mission partners that we're you know it's more reliable for them they can count on us and um, and uh, more consistent for our um, our TRs right so they they know exactly when they're going to be called to duty so. Uh, a big part of that effort is uh, re redefining the UTCs because that's how we're going to be presenting our forces, our capabilities. So, man, that's been a huge lift <laughs> working with the. And, and fortunately, we've got good partnerships. Um, we're, 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 we're hand in hand working with REGAF and, and having a, a real big say on uh, what those look like and they're making sure that they're friendly for, for our, for our uh, TR forces. Yeah, it's exciting to hear and see it. You know, to hear from REGAF partners and then seeing emails from ACC staff about 
how hey we've got some draft UTCs and we're building you know we're building this thing out for the first time ever for cyber I'm like yeah that's us mm -hmm. like being the cheerleader behind like that's our people doing all that work so they're a really great partnership in the space and so we've taken the lead so I'm really proud of that mm -hmm. and sir of course you've already provided commander's intent uh, really we're certainly excited to be supporting the the OCO fires pilot uh, of course, with the weapon systems that Senior Master Sergeant Brown mentioned earlier, DCO focus. So to see the wing go into the the area of offensive cyber is, is truly exciting. It's been a gap uh, seeing how we can align with that mission set because it's certainly important. And I see that probably more so on the staff in my day-to-day -day job in terms of offensive cyber. And now seeing that as a reserve force, we're trying to get into that space is exciting. Yeah, we're going to need to think differently about how to do it right and so the guards got one way they do it that they present and they do OCO we're trying to do it on a smaller scale but in a more meaningful impactful way in a way that um, gives our reservists maximum flexibility and gives the regaf the ability to task us in a way to fill gaps for them on a real-time basis and so um, it's been an idea that's been brewing. I know we've taken a lot of people have, have talked about it. We've socialized it for some time and um, really appreciate, you know, your, your organization's kind of push and continual discussion about what's the training look like? How's the weapon tactics going to fit in? What kind of people do we need? What's the scheduling process looks like? And, and then and how we factor that into all the work we do with the, the cub updates and operational thought processes there is is really kind of holistic of how we're going to build this thing. And it, it's literally taken a village to get where we are, and I'm excited about the future. So, Yes, sir. Again, just another area, sir, that uh, our current ops, as far as exercise planning, over the last year, we've been part of, we're tightly with 688th OSS and uh, their Savage Server Rules exercise. We've had two iterations of it, and um, we've actually had I want to say 26 members come out to San Antonio to participate in the exercise and get that training. We actually had the ACC IG come out and inspect this last one this past spring, and I want to say it was four or five of our members that got sexual performers for the exercise. So, just another area where we're, you know, uh, working with our mission partners to um, to uh, get our reservists out here and get trained and and do great things. And certainly bring our expertise to the table. I, I think of the previous exercise we talked about that one of the wing members had such a critical role that the exercise wouldn't have wouldn't have worked without him. And so that's kind of where we are, and that's where I see us. We're not this. We're not like the guard who's going to bring in this gigantic force and a whole CPT and boom, do this mission for six months and then go away and never hear from him again. I think we're 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 going to bring impactful people to the fight at times when it's needed and continue to grow that, mature that in a way where we can be super impactful but on a smaller scale. So I think the, the OSF really has been able to generate that and um, kind of be my the extension of my armor like, this is important to us. We need to go do this. We need to be part of the team. We need to grow and eventually lead some of these exercises to a point where, where we're that expertise and that they're coming in behind us and that we're integrated as a team and it doesn't matter who you are. You got that cyber patch on your arm, you're part of the team and you're gonna continue to do this thing together. So appreciate that. Talk a little bit about what the next iteration of the exercise is gonna be. Yeah, so next next one, we're actually in the planning phase now. It's gonna be uh, in October. This is coming up October, FY23. Um, we're trying to expand on some of the web systems, getting more, uh, more, more task focus more so for our 854 616 OC the OC portion uh, to get them more integrated um, but we definitely definitely have gotten great feedback from those who were um, from the reserve side and active side that were on the last iteration in the spring and just going well, like I said work on moving forward um, we've had we've progressed every when I say we I say in active we've progressed in uh, every iteration of the XI so just moving forward and get the best we can out of it. Yeah, let's just keep doing it. And this is a plug for anybody out there that's listening. Like, you want to be part of this exercise, we'll find a way to make you part of the exercise and give you the opportunity to bring your, your expertise and get some training and understand what we're trying to do here, especially as we, meaning the entire Air Force, is transitioning 
and some of these organizations into a security operations center model, network operations center model. Like we need all the good ideas. We need all the teammates to come in and help us understand where we're going and where we're, frankly, where we're missing, where the gaps and seams are, and help you fill those from your industry and your, your part-time work. So excited about the future. It's, it's limitless at this point, and um, the, the relationships we have there um, are largely a part because the work that you guys do sitting in here in your team. Like you guys are kind of the foundation for that relationship reaching across to the 68th and 67th and building that relationship and trust so that they can call on us, you know, when, when, when we're needed. So, um, we're, uh, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is on the weapons and tactics side. So I'm interested in thoughts about, um, getting somebody through weapons school. And so any thoughts there by the group? Yeah, I'll jump in and I know one would follow up. So, we just hired our chief of weapons and tactics, uh, Captain Bulldog McCulley, very sharp individual, very motivated. And so that was the, the first part. Uh, we just had a, a gap for so long that it was really hard to you know, get after that program. So I'm excited to see what he does. But it has been an issue. Uh, having someone dedicated and focused on it is gonna you know, move the mission forward. We certainly have to get more patches across the wing because not only, from, not only from a mission standpoint, I think we bring a lot of great civilian expertise, but I think there's a little bit of messaging, good or bad, in terms of having or not having a patch. And so I think that, you know, if we can get a patch in the wing, that's gonna bring a certain amount of legitimacy as we message to our, our partners on the active duty side. And so I know Captain McCulley's gonna be engaged in the Weapons and Tactics Conference. He's gonna be working closely with our, our tactical units to identify those candidates and more so mentor them through the process and start to get them up to speed before they are going to the schoolhouse and they uh, maybe they feel ill-prepared. We're trying to prepare them beforehand uh, compared in the past where it was more of a, hey, you're, you've been selected, you know, have at it. Good it's luck. Be, good <laughs> luck. It's going to be more of the coaching and mentoring to make sure we're setting individuals up for success. Yeah, we want them to be successful. Um, we don't want to waste their time and waste a bunch of money. Um, it takes a really strong technical foundation to, to get to weapons school. They don't have time to teach you that. So um, I think if there's people out there listening that we'd ask you to, to have engagement with Captain McCauley, just ask him questions. He's trying to build kind of a pool of interested people at this point, and then we're going to target a class in the future. We're really going to try to uh, pick somebody and, and take a run at it. And so. Um, I think it's, I don't want to say, but not everybody passes. Like, yeah. it, it's very difficult, but it's worth the challenge. We want we want to give somebody that opportunity. Yes. And, and so um, going forward here, what other kind of things, and um, if you want to make any plugs or requests, what kind of things are you looking for from the wing and as far as engagement or um, opportunities? So in, in terms of engagement and opportunity, I've been thinking quite a bit, and I need to put some things on paper in terms of how we can better get after capabilities on the DCO side. And so I know that, you know, there's a battle rhythm tied to going after, you know, guard and reserve funding, right? But I think sometimes there's a gap in terms of what we acquire on the, on the reserve side compared to the active duty needs. And so, I think we can do a better job of marrying, you know, what's captured for requirements on the active duty side because they're doing it by weapon system, regardless if whatever if you're an active duty person or a reservist, they're doing requirements by weapon system. And so if there's a way to marry up what we acquire on the reserve side to those requirements and priorities on the active duty side, I think that would go a long ways. And so I just need to put that on paper as one of my last things I want to do before I exit command <laughs> and, and get that in front of you. But in terms of the OSF, again, I think Senior Master Sergeant Brown hit on it. You know, this is a perfect opportunity for people to join the OSF. Uh, they're coming at the right time because we're, again, transitioning to more of the traditional operational uh, support squadron role. And again, seasoned people, CMR experience on, on weapon systems, I think those are the type of individuals we're looking for because that's really just going to expedite the transition and 
allow us to better support our tactical units. Yeah, we want people to be tactical SMEs and experts and, and take that experience and, and bring it to OSF, bring it to the 854, and then we want you to graduate from the OSF and go back to the unit and bring that knowledge back and then continue to grow and develop. And I think it's a natural, re I mean, when I look at traditional flying wings and I look at people in the OSS um, positions and leadership roles, like those are key people and they go on to do great things at other places. Like that's the same thing here. Like we want high speed people, smart and, and interested in working, certainly, right? You gotta wanna work because there's <laughs> a lot of work to be done that we need you to be part of the team. Yes. So um, I really appreciate you guys coming in today. Um, I know you're working close with 860th OSS as they kind of build kind of the same journey that you guys are on and how we share those lessons. And, and I know that'll help you even focus more on what we need to and you don't have to necessarily cover down on the entire wing anymore but um i'll you know i always like to leave you guys with uh i'll give each of you a chance with cl a closing thought and we'll wrap it up jarvis right, so i appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this sir and, and get our message out in terms of the osf again if you're interested in joining our team we certainly want to evaluate all qualified candidates and so major perez will be the focal point for that and again, we just look forward to the transition that we're implementing so that we can provide the support that you all need at the tactical units. Awesome. Juan? Yeah, so um, it's easy to see all the cool stuff that we're doing and involved in. Uh, what, what you cannot see is the, like the, the, the team culture we have in the organization that Colonel Croft has really built. And uh, I mean, really, you know, it, it, I'm com I come to work every day, but it feels like I'm just hanging out with my buds and getting stuff done together. And it, I can't think of a better, you know, more. This has definitely been my favorite assignment, hands down. Awesome. So, yeah. Thanks. Sir Brown. All right. Closing Final out. word. Final word. Um, just to expand on as far as those members who are interested in coming and the career growth that you're going to have, you know, like uh, Colonel Harris said, you know, you're at the tactical unit, and once you, you come to the OSF, you and me coming from the 6A knife, you definitely expand on that because we're, we're, we're seeing every weapon system. We're seeing what's going on, what's potentially going to be coming into the future. And um, to be able to go back, you know, to graduate and go back to the unit and uh, to promote and then have that wealth of knowledge to expand on. And it's just going to make you a, a better individual, not only for the unit, for the wing, for the Air Force, and you'll be able to uh, definitely grow in your career. Awesome. Thanks. Well said, team. Uh, again, I just want to say, Thanks, OSF. It's been awesome working with you guys. Um, being able to build something that we couldn't do this thing, we couldn't be anywhere near where we are without the investment that you guys have made in the wing, not just in your own organization. So thank you for that. And we're, we're, we're on the right path. I'm excited about the acceleration we're making. And we're getting over that hump where it's going to be downhill and things are just going to really start coming together. And so I'm really excited about that. We're going to grow your team and, and really help you do great things for the wing. Yes, sir. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Until next time.